Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise on tonight. Uh, he is so worthy to be praised. Today is Monday, uh, December 12th. Welcome to Chosen. Uh, truly, this is the night for refreshing, to be revived, to be inspired on tonight. You were chosen uh, to be here with us on tonight. So we thank each and every one of you for coming on tonight. Uh, tonight we have a great, not just a, a, a great, a phenomenal a lineup for us on tonight. We have a great um, presenter, uh, which will be Patriarch uh, Starlins, uh, formerly known as Archbishop Starlins. Uh, then we will be having our opening prayer by uh, Dr. Yvonne McMurray. So on tonight, I just want to ask each and every one of us, if we're not speaking, please put our, uh, make sure our devices are on mute. Uh, if you have uh, anything to say, please comment in the chat and we will respond to you. Uh, you already know where your own restroom's at in your own house, so you're free to go out <laughs> there at any time. And also just have an open mind to uh, glean, understand, and get what God has in store uh, for you on tonight. Nothing else being said at this time, I would like to present to some and introduce to others, no one other than Dr. Yvonne McMurray, Director of Women Empowerment uh, ministries and California. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and help me welcome Dr. Yvonne uh, McMurray. Praise God. Praise God. It's good to see each and every one of you. God bless and keep each and every one of you as we bow and enter into prayer for this union. We ask Heavenly Father, First, we give you thanks for the opportunity to come together as your people, meeting under the banner of Christ, to uplift your word, to edify and exhort you through our education of you, knowing, Father God, it is you that gives us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word through those that you have anointed to break bread with us. So we thank you for all the difference in our speaking and the eloquence of those that bring us your word that we will find life in this word, that we will find elevation, we'll find wisdom, we'll find revelation in your word, Father God, that it will cause us to grow and mature in you. We pray that your Holy Spirit will direct and govern uh, Archbishop Stalin as he began to teach and break bread with us to give us the understanding of the word through this chosen event. May he challenge us in a new and different way so that we are prepared to look at our own Christian faith and examine our walk with you, Father God, to see where our spiritual life is lacking. Father, we pray that as we see this, that we will begin to build up on it and we will have the courage to address any needs we identify within our lives. We pray that you will give us open ears to hear, give us mindset of understanding and wisdom that we may process that which is being taught to us. We know that by your spirit, you will lead and guide us in all things and all things being the truth of your word. And we pray, Father God, that you will be all that we need you to be in this educational session so that we will come out with the clarity and understanding of your will and your purpose for our lives. This we pray and ask in your son Jesus name. We thank you and we say amen and adieu. Adieu and amen. Praise God uh, for that wonderful prayer on uh, tonight. Uh, again, I, I introduce Dr. Uh, Yvonne McMurray, but I forgot to tell y'all who I am. My name is Pastor Antonio Bowen. I am the uh, National YCLC National Co-Director. Uh, I am also a pastor of a church and, uh, well, well, was a pastor of a church in Las Vegas. I have officially relocated to the great city of a Seattle, Washington. So I am so, so excited about this new uh, location. I am here right now. It is snowing, it is cold, uh, and I'm missing Vegas just a little because of that. Uh, but with nothing else being said, we have a great, a great, great teacher on tonight. Um, 
who's going to give us some great instruction, uh, teach us about some great things. And that is no one other than Archbishop Starlin's patriarch, uh, Archbishop Starlin's. He is the Midwest ACLC co-chair. And tonight he will be teaching on the completion of God purpose of the creation of the human fall. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Archbishop Augustus Starlins. God bless you, sir. And after his completion, we will be hands of Dr. Luan Rouse. Thank you very much, my beloved and esteemed younger brother, Pastor Antonio M. Bowen. It is, an, it is indeed a distinct honor and privilege for me to be a part of this chosen experience. And my gratitude, my profound appreciation is extended to my brother, the Reverend Dr. Luan Abram Rouse, a brother bishop, and that he would reach out to me and invite me to this platform. Uh, without further ado, we are going to focus on chapter three in the divine principle entitled eschatology and human history. That, big, that word eschatology is a big word. I know it might frighten some of us, but that word eschatology can be broken down into two pieces, if you will. Eschaton and that ology. The word eschatology has its root meaning in Greek. It comes from the root word eschaton, which means the last things or the last things as related to the end times, uh, to the judgment, the afterlife. And whenever, whenever you see ology in a, in a word like psychology, uh, when you see sociology, that ology comes from the Greek and it means a study. So that if you want to really get a grasp of the word eschatology, just think of a study of the last days, the last things as pertaining to the end times or the afterlife. And so therefore we have with eschatology is really, uh, it's, a, it's a system of doctrines that concern the last days or the last things. So that will help us to get an understanding of the word eschatology and human history. Now let us launch into an understanding. You're gonna see diagrams or boxed in sections for each of these slides. It, it sort of like helps to clarify what is below the actual box itself. So if you are gonna be teaching this material on eschatology from, from the divine principle, chapter three, eschaton in human history, you're gonna find these boxes. And there, for example, this first box says human history, origin, direction, and final destination. And then it has in blue, um, in, in a blue background with black writing, these particular quotes. But then what you do is you go right to uh, the sentences beneath the box that helps to explain what is actually in the box, okay? So you go straight down to uh, the statements, the bullet point statements, and then it helps to you to understand what is above it in the box. So as we begin this chapter three with eschatology and human history, and that first diagram, we begin with the bullet point, we dwell in ignorance of history, uncertain about its origin, the direction in which it is heading and its final destination. Concerning eschatology or the doctrine of the last days, many Christians believe literally what is written in the Bible. For example, the heavens and the elements will melt with fire is found in first Peter. That first, that's, uh, that, I'm sorry, that second letter of Peter, the second letter of Peter, chapter three, verse 12. Or another example, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven is found in Matthew's gospel, chapter 24, verse 29. And another example, the dead in Christ will rise to meet the Lord in the air found in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter four, verses 16 and 17. So the question for us to ask now, are those literal or symbolic references to the end times or the last days? The next slide, please.
So, however, we must, however, however, we must ask whether these events will take place literally or whether the verses are symbolic. So, to address this issue, we should first understand such fundamental matters as the purpose of God's creation, the meaning of the human fall, and the goal of the providence of restoration. We're making some adjustments here. So we begin with section one here, the completion of God's purpose of creation and the human fall. Human beings are endowed with emotional sensitivity to the heart of God, intuition and reason to comprehend his will and the requisite abilities to practice it. A person who relates with God in this manner will attain perfection of his individual character. So we're gonna look at God as, as God formed man and woman in God's image and likeness and then bestowed upon them what we call the three great blessings, to be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion over the earth. Keep those concepts in mind because the first slide here, the first section of this presentation deals with individual perfection, which means to be fruitful. So what does the word fruitful mean? Or what is the meaning behind that first blessing to be fruitful? It means to reach a level of personal, individual, spiritual perfection or maturity, okay? That's what the first one is. We'll go back go back again, Minister Quinn, to that, that other slide. I didn't finish that other slide yet, so let's go back to that, good. And so therefore, so that's individual perfection. Then we're gonna look at what it means to mature that relates to family perfection. And then when it comes to have dominion, we're gonna look at the, in, we're gonna look at perfection on the level of dominion. So first of all, just remember this, that as we look at this first section, in order to understand what is the completion of God's purpose of creation, it begins first and foremost with individual perfection. As I said, human beings are endowed with emotional sensitivity to the heart of God, intuition and reason to comprehend his will and the requisite abilities to practice it. A person who relates with God in this manner will attain perfection of his individual character. So God abides within the mind, listen to this, God abides within the mind of a fully mature person. Such a person becomes a temple of God and leads his or her life in harmony with God's will while being fully attuned to God. And so we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Holy Spirit dwells within you? And then there's an, another example in that same 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, that says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? That's powerful, okay? So as we become aware that we are temples of God, that God dwells within us, our goal in regards to individual, perfe individual perfection is to be in divine alignment, divine synchronization in oneness with God. Next slide, please. So we see in the completion of God's purpose of creation, individual perfection. And we see that reference to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 again. For this reason, it is written in 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? And again, in the gospel of John chapter 14, verse 20, it is also written, quote, in that day, you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I 
in you. That was said by Yeshua, Jesus. Next slide, please. So we're focused on the perfection of the family. After we look at individual perfection, we now look at the perfection of the family. Had Adam and Eve reached perfection, they would have born good children and founded a sinless family and society in complete concordance, in complete accordance, what happened to the slide there, with the will of God, okay, with God's blessing. They would then have founded the kingdom of heaven, which consists of one great family with the same parents. Great. Next slide, please. So, the kingdom of heaven has the form of an individual who has achieved perfection of character. I want to read that again, because as Pastor Eva McMurray said in her prayer, let us be open to a fuller or deeper understanding of the word of God. And particularly when we hear about the kingdom of heaven and this viewpoint that is up in the sky, in the sweet by and by, beyond our reach, the divine principle is saying that the kingdom of heaven has the form of an individual who has achieved perfection of character, just as the members of the human body, just as the members of the human body are coordinated in horizontal relationships with each other and move as one in response to the vertical commands of the brain. In this society, people, yes, People will form cooperative, horizontal relationships with each other and live together in tune with the vertical directions emanating from God. So our relationship with God is vertical, but our relationship with each other is horizontal. In that, in that case, when the kingdom of heaven comes about as we bring forth perfected individuals, no one will harm his neighbor, since if one person were to suffer pain, everyone in this society would experience the heart of God who shares in that person's grief. Let us continue. Regardless of the purity of the people of this society, if they were living in primitive circumstances like cavemen, this could not be considered the kingdom of heaven, which both God and human beings desire. So now, after after we looked at the after we looked at individual perfection, number one, then we then that individual meeting his or her spouse and forming, becoming that married couple, that blessed or central, that blessed central couple, then multiply children where they, parents and children stand together to bring about the perfection of dominion. So God gave us the mandate to have dominion over all things, did he not? God said to be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. Hence, to realize the ideal of creation, people of perfected character should advance science, harness the natural world, and create a pleasant social and living environment. This will be the kingdom of God on earth. God's primary purpose of creation. Listen to this. God's primary purpose of creation is to do what? To establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. Let's go back to that slide. There it is there. Listen to that. Huh? 
the, this will be the kingdom of heaven on earth. God's primary purpose of creation is to build the kingdom of heaven on earth. Wow. Can you believe that? The kingdom of heaven on earth, not up in the sky, in the sweet by and by, where you can sit in your rocking chair and eat your sweet potato pie. No. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> This is, this is earth shattering theology here. Now let's look at the consequences of the human fall, okay? And we see what Satan does when it hits the individual, the family, and the charge we have from God to have dominion over all things. Due to the fall, human beings united with Satan and became his dwelling places, acquiring an evil nature. We're supposed to be temples of God, but due to this satanic invasion, due to the fall, human beings are now united with Satan and what was supposed to be the temple of God is now the temple of Satan, acquiring an evil nature. People with evil nature have propagated evil through their children, constituting evil families, evil societies, and an evil world. And what happens when this takes place? This is the hell on earth in which we have been living. A new concept of hell, huh? Right here on earth. Next slide, please. So in this hell, we cannot properly form cooperative horizontal relationships with one another because our vertical relationships with God have been severed. We perform deeds harmful to others because we cannot feel the pain and suffering of our neighbors as our own. Hmm. Next slide, please. So once people have accustomed this, uh, themselves to living in hell on earth, when they end their physical life, they naturally enter hell in the spirit world. It's all, it already begins on earth. We have, okay, we have, next slide. Okay, you were fine. We have not built the kingdom of God, but instead established the sovereignty of Satan. For this reason, Satan is called by Jesus as the ruler of this world. It's right in John chapter 12, verse 31. When the ruler of this world be casted out and I be lifted up from the earth, Jesus says, I'll draw all unto me uh, as well. And the God and Satan is called the God of this world is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Next slide. There it is, bam, right between the eyes. Did it shake you? Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> defer to uh, our beloved and esteemed national co-chairman of the American Culture Leadership Conference, His Excellency, <laughs> Bishop, <laughs> and Dr. Bam. Luan Abel Rouse. The floor is now yours. Uh, bam, I heard it, bam. <laughs> Did that rock Dang. the world? <laughs> you know, I, Patriot Stallings, it is so good to see you. Listen, I, I, I feel like the will of God is all over this because you're bringing us to an understanding of what is happening among us. Yes, yes. You know, in this world, it, it's, it's, you know, it's an interesting thing. You see, yeah. brothers and sisters, they can be together one day, cheering one another, loving one another, yeah. and within that same day, it's like oh, one host, one, <laughs> one, <laughs> one thing, one word in a second can turn all of that around and they yeah. seem like they've been enemies forever, yeah. influenced yeah. by that ultimate enemy, and it is not, not good. 
Not good. Not good. Yeah, yeah. Not good. But you know, before we get into the practicalities of this day, I want to talk to you about something else. You scholar, you 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 mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, brother, and it takes me back to studies of Socrates and yes. getting down to the purpose of it all. Come on now. Come on, bring it on. The soul bring of on. man and woman that they might do that which is ethically right and morally straight. Eschatology. You, you know, when I think of our eschatological future, man, sometimes it makes me wonder. It causes me pain sometimes to think of, whoa, what about those around us, Lord? Forget about me. Just, mm -hmm. gosh, so much stuff is happening around us. Say a little bit more to us about eschatology. Definitely, Dr. Rouse. I believe that the majority of the world's inhabitants now estimated at 8 billion people, fail to focus on the last days. And when they do, their understanding is that the world will be destroyed by fire. Uh, the sun will burn up everybody on the face of the earth. The earth will, ex will, will be no more. And we'll all get in the good ship lollipop and row our way to heaven up there. But if we understand just who we are, Amen. that we, that there is something about us that has always existed from eternity because we came forth out of the essence or the nature of God, out of the oneness of God, and that we are here on the earth with the presence of the spirit of the invisible God dwelling within us, that makes us live, move, and have our being. And then when this world can afford us a home no longer, the spirit will leave, the, will exit the body, return back unto the source from which it came, helps us to realize that there's something in that doxology that you and I have been saying in our yes. uh, institutional churches, our mainline Christian church, where it says, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world yeah. without end. That if in the beginning we were we were in God, not with the individual personalized specificity specificity of a birth certificate name, but mm -hmm. we came out of the essence of God. So we had to have existed in God from the beginning. So we came out of God. But what's amazing about the present moment is that even though we came out of God, when we are born upon the earth, God comes in us. God comes back into us. And then when life is over, that spirit in God that makes us, that made us live, move, and have our being returns back to God. So as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. So the whole concept is, is that we have to have a focus on ever what shall be, what is the future, because eschatology is really futuristic. While it is, it is futuristic, while it is anchored in the present moment, because we have to be focused on the last process, the last step of human life, which will allow us to be, which will allow us to return back unto the social which we came. It's in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. In the Hebrew scriptures, what Christians call the Old Testament, that one day the dust shall return to the earth from whence it came, but the spirit or the life breath shall return unto God who gave it. That's eschatology. Returning unto the source is eschatology, personal, family, and society. So my concern is we, we are so caught up in the present moment that we fail to be futuristic in our understanding of one day rendering unto the source that which made us live, move, and have our being. And that now we are called to understand that the last things, what will occur in the last days is actually in our hands. It's within our grasp. We can determine in many ways what will be the, eschatolo as you said, the eschatological results of our living here on earth if we perfect ourselves individually and we connect 
with that spouse to create that blessed central couple that can then bring forth children as a blessed central family. And together we can establish the kingdom of heaven here on earth so that in the last days, <coughs> we will present back to our God is that kingdom of heaven here on earth where the vertical intersects with the horizontal. And we can truly say that is salvation. You know, Archbishop Stalin, I'm Patriarch Stalin, you, you got me going. <laughs> you, you got things stirring up in me. You, you know, it's been a long time since I've sung that song. <laughs> but you know, it, the, the truth of the matter is it brings a clear message to us in the beginning. In the beginning. Now. Now. You know, and what we are to hope for Yes. Looking towards the eschaton, yes. is that we can, you know, look, listen to this awesome about Patriot Stones. I want you to work this a little bit for me because you know true parents. Yes. You, you love true parents. True Indeed. parents change the whole scope for you. Yes. In that, we used to sing all the time World without, without end. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, the true parents gives us that opportunity to even shake up the eschaton. Exactly. Because they're saying, get it right now. Yeah. The only way we can have this world without end is to get it back to that beginning. And as it shall be. Huh? So critically important to God, our heavenly parent, that he would send his son, his only begotten son, as we say, to restore us back to that original place in creation before there was the invasion of the planet by sin. Mm. That's, that's why we have to go beyond. We cannot begin with a doctrine of the fall or a doctrine of atonement as mainline Christianity does. We have to begin, it has to be preceded with the doctrine of creation right. to know what it was in the beginning. So when Christian theology begins with an atonement, with a, a doctrine of atonement, the only possible conclusion is that someone has to die. Wow. Because atonement implies we are not at one with God. And so we must do something, a sacrifice has to be offered an, an, an oblation, a, 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 you know, a, a, something has to be killed in order to restore man back to that original place because of the human fall. But what's so beautiful about the doctrine of the divine principle is that it does not start at the doctrine of uh, the fall. It, pre it is preceded by the doctrine of creation. Mm. Therefore, what Jesus came to do, first and foremost, was to bring us back to the beginnings of creation, not primarily to be despised, rejected, and subjected to uh, a brutality, a murder, and an ignominious death on the gibbet of the cross, which Christians believe that's why he came, first and foremost, to be to die on the cross. And in order to die on the cross, he had to be rejected. He had to be hated. And that, that flies in the face of the Bible, of biblical passages that say very clearly that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Oh, man. And God wanted his son to be accepted. And if yeah. he had been believed and accepted and loved, we never would have crucified him. So therefore, one has to ask, what was the primary purpose for God sending Jesus? It was to restore mankind humanity back to its original state before the satanic influence destroyed God's plan for humankind. Mm. That God, God, last thing I would say, God is invisible. We read in the Gospel of John, it's recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter four, chapter four verse 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. <laughs> So therefore, if God is spirit, how does God become visible? By dwelling in us as a temple, as we read in 1 Corinthians 3.16.
1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. So that man and woman had the responsibility of making God visible, making God tangible on the earth. And what Jesus, the, the role, the primary purpose of Jesus was to bring us back to that place where we could understand that the invisible God, the spirit of the invisible God comes and dwells in, in fleshly form so that we might give visible and tangible manifestation to that invisible God. But we cannot do that with sin invading the planet. So that is what Jesus wanted to do. But because we rejected him, because we did not understand what was that original purpose, we crucified him. We crucified him. That's why Jesus says, I must come back. That's the whole concept of the Lord of the second advent. And we don't fully understand that either in the, in the Christian world. I'm not going to go there. Right <laughs> I'm not going to go there right there. Patriot, you, might not, you may not go there tonight, but everybody listen, the Patriot is going to be with us four more Mondays. So you hey, make your calls, reach out to your people, get them on here, because we're going to be talking about purpose. I mean, we're really going to get deep down in these weeks into purpose because eschatology really has an ultimate meaning for us in purpose, yeah. in our souls being here, where our souls, how our souls ought to exist here before yeah. end times or uh, in mm. that nature. It, it's, you know, it, it, it's an amazing thing to me, Patriarch, that some people want to think the worse we live, the longer that God will let us stay here. <laughs> I believe the better we live, the longer it is that God does not have to change the atmosphere, yeah. or as uh, uh, Mother Moon says, the owner of the universe won't have to change and shake up the universe if we get it right. The problem is we haven't been getting it right. Hey, listen. <laughs> Dr. McMurray wants to get in here and say a word, and I think Reverend Katulik needs to open up her mic, too, because I might just call on her for a word in this thing. But right now, Dr. McMurray, you've been listening in. You prayed us in. Tell us what's in your heart to say. You know, I'm just overwhelmed with 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 with, with the Patriots uh, teaching here because <laughs> it's just so big in my heart that we need to finally have some some righteous teaching you know, yes, where we yes. can come to the understanding as to why our purpose has been set for us here on earth and what the divinity of God is for us here yes. on earth, because we are in this rapture syndrome. Everybody want to go rapture <laughs> jumping, and I don't know where they jump into, because first and foremost, there's no reason to jump, because when God do things, he does it complete. He's already said it, and as he said, his word said that he gave earth to man, so while we're trying to get prepared to dwell in an atmospheric out of heaven embodiment and that's not what he created us to be so i i'm just i'm sitting here and i'm going yes 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 <laughs> I, I, it, was a, <laughs> it was a purpose for me to have my mic off because it's hard for my spirit man not to interject when a nugget is dropped and there's yeah. been a whole lot of gold bars drop brother you didn't drop no nuggets you dropped some gold bars today <laughs> You know, because we do need this teaching to understand right. who we are and what purpose we are to serve for God. Yeah. And it's not for us to sit here and be out of line, be in line with God and out of line with our fellow man. It has got to be horizontal and vertical all yes. the way to make right. your make the characteristics of God empowered in your life so that we become that living testimony to the world and we don't have to sit here and try to shake it and fake it god done already <laughs> made it and all we have to do is line up with the purpose and the principle of what god has already purposed for us as human to dwell Woo! upon the earth that's just where I am. So that's what I had to say. It's been burning inside of me for 45 years. So thank you, Patriot, Archbishop Collins. Yes, whatever. Collins bringing the rubber to the road where they both can roll together and be one. We got to become one in God. And when right. we become that one in him, then we will respect the creator for the creation that he's given us. And we truly become that loving 
kind human being, and now we get heaven right here on earth. <laughs> right in front of mine. Right. <laughs> Woo! Good. Woo! Good. Oh, Somebody right call there. the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> the patriarch stall is you. you 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 are shaking it up and and uh dr mcmurray is firing it up <laughs> oh she's firing up the engine <laughs> that's powerful the roof the roof, the roof is on fire <laughs> patriarch before i go to reverend katulik say a word to us about how you're shaking it up on every day you 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 are speaking to people every day on the network. Good right, news. Yes, I, yeah. Thank you. Talk thank about you. it for a moment. Yeah, thank Tell you us. for that, Dr. Ross. Every every day, Monday through Friday, at twelve o'clock noon Eastern time. So that's nine a.m. Pacific. You know, uh, Central. It's uh, eleven o'clock. Uh, you can you can be a part. Just go to uh, Facebook. That's probably the easiest platform. Go to Facebook.com and just type in my name, George Stallings, uh, and you and you can be a part of the Good News Network, where we seek to accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative in the midst <laughs> of a global pandemic that is Ooh. affecting our everyday lives. And we bring the word. And, and, and Dr. McMurray, are you you tune into that 9 a.m. from from your area, I tell you, we are lighting the, the torch every Amen. every day, Monday every through Friday, day. and every and day. it's it, it is talking and, and it's bringing breaking open, uh, unpacking, exegeting uh, passages from Scripture as it relates to everyday life. And I'm telling you, I'm I, it, we're having a field day on that platform. So tell Lottie, Dottie, and everybody to join <laughs> us. Go to George Stallings Facebook. Uh, dot com and at 12 noon Eastern time and adjust it to your region for the Good News Network. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. Reverend, look, you've been listening tonight. I want to hear a word from you while you're speaking. Young soon, I want you to search for Light It Up by Diedrich Haddon for me. Have it ready for me when I call for it. And I'm going to call for that before we leave tonight because, you know, we really need to be mentoring YCLC. And, Re and Reverend uh, Pastor and this enormous leader that comes on every week to be with us in Antonio Bowman. He's one of the leaders of the Young Christian Leadership Conference. Let's pray for them and encourage them. We'll come back to that in a moment. But before we do, Reverend Katulik, you've been listening to The Patriot. What might you say tonight? Well, praise the Lord, saints. You know, the kingdom of God lies within us, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, we are seated with him in heavenly places, which means we're heir to God and joint heir with Jesus. So we're one in the spirit of the living God. <coughs> Excuse me. So when Jesus said, I got to go away, and it's better that I go away, but I'm going to send the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, and it's going to lead, guide, and direct you, that gave us the authority that we need in his name to establish the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Just like we say in our prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our responsibility is that we are his hands and feet and voice. We are establishing the kingdom of God right now on earth as it is in heaven. And he delegated that name. There's power in his name. And we have to execute it and have dominion. And the righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost comes from God because we are one in the spirit of the living God. Mm. Thank you, Reverend Katulik. I want to also thank all of the women in ministry that are with us tonight. I know that uh, Minister Dr. Rako Jenkins, she's with us every week. I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't seen her face, but I know that she's somewhere in this mix. I bet you, I bet you I'm strolling now. There she is. <laughs> We had a good time. I was telling Marie, I saw Minister Jenkins getting down with the dance with us at the party and, and on Saturday in New Jersey. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins, for being there and being with us every Monday night. I haven't seen 
our our leader in Dr. Hernandez. But Marie reminded me earlier today, Bishop Edwards, that your wonderful bride is having surgery tomorrow and we've been praying for her. We ask everybody to do that. Before we close tonight, Dr. Tanya Edwards, since you will be going to surgery and we know that Bishop will be caring for you after that surgery, I want to express to both of you thanks and gratitude for getting us going again in a renewed way with Chosen. That your, the spirit that you brought, the commitment that you brought, the way in which you were teaching, it is so admirable. Bishop Edwards, keep doing what you do in Subregion 3. It is just wonderful. And Dr. Edwards in, in uh, WCLC. Before we close, Dr. Edwards, I'm going to ask Bishop Edwards to say a word. And then I would like for you to close us in prayer. You know where you are and what's going on before you go to surgery tomorrow. And God bless you. We're going to call on you for that. But Patriot Stallings, <laughs> before we light it up, give us a closing <laughs> word tonight and we're going to look forward to next Monday. Bring everybody you can to be with us next Monday. Archbishop Stallings, and right after that, be ready as Pastor Diedrich Hatton caught heat and YCLC will light it up, cure it up, young soon, right after the Patriot says his words. Patriot Thank Stallings. Thank you so much, Dr. Rouse. I think each one of us was called and chosen by God for such a time as this. And our responsibility must be twofold, to comfort the disturbed, as well as disturb the comfortable. Because so many of us, particularly in the Christian persuasion, have become so comfortable with a theology that is tattered, worn, uh, misused and mishandled, that we need to come into a catechetical or educational setting such as this chosen program every week to grow in our understanding of the word of God, to expand that understanding and to realize that there are still elements in this word that still need to be unpacked, to be exegeted. And I guarantee you, anyone who comes and is a part of Chosen, as you have so brilliantly orchestrated, Dr. Rouse, your concept, your idea, you originated in this context of Chosen, will find that their theology will not only be deepened, but they will be even more profound in their deliverance of the word of God because they will bring people to a better understanding where they can truly participate in building the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. The kingdom of heaven is now. It's in our midst, as Jesus said. We don't, as, 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 as uh, Dr. Kotulik said, Marilyn Kotulik said, the kingdom of God is within us. Let's bring it forth. Let's make it real. Thank you, Dr. Ross. Thank you. Light it up, everybody. Tell everybody in your subregion, all of your neighborhoods, let's take a trip around the world. Light it up. This is the final boarding call for passengers Dietrich Haddon, YCLC, and CARP, booked on flight 596 to Incheon. Please proceed to gate H immediately. Yep, it's Dietrich. Ah. I got heat in the building. Yeah. YCLC, C-A-R-P, peace starts with you and me, let's get it. I wish I could put everybody on a plane and take a trip around the world. So they can see how we are all the same and we all go through pain, but love still remains. I think we have a solution. Just a little bit more love that the world need to find love. All of us, love. we can change the world. If all of us, love. the world needs a lot of love, a lot of love. Lift your flags hey. up and light it up, light it up for love. Hey. If all of us, love. we can change the world. If all of us, love. the world needs yeah. a lot of love. Play.
Yes, light it up with love. Marie just told me to tell everybody, listen, she just went to Apple Music and bought it for 99 cents. Now, she's saying that's important because we are in a campaign. Yes, we are. We're in a $1.1 million campaign, meaning that the American Clergy Leadership Conference want to bring everybody in America Christians, the validity of the unification movement, all of us help raise a million dollars to help make sure that in Korea, we return Korea to God. Before the decision of Russia and America about bringing this great divide of North and South, the capital that's in the North was a holy city nearing to be like New Jerusalem. And New Jerusalem, boom! A decision made. Communists have that control, but guess what? They don't control Chakya. And we're talking about that holy of holies, the capital of Chung Il Guk. Help us complete the building of it and paying for it. We're in this campaign. We're going to do it. Diedrich Hatton has given this song to YCLC. So we're raising a million, but YCLC, True Mother wants them over there. 100,000 is being raised for them to be there in 2023. Go buy that song, 99 cents. Get everybody to buy this song, given by a Christian pastor to this community so we can light it up. Bishop Edwards. What's your commentary? Then Dr. Edwards, lead us in our closing word in prayer. <laughs> wow, this is exciting. I'm telling you, it's so good to realize I don't have to die and go to the grave to find the kingdom. It is alive and well right here. Chanel Gook. Doc, oh, Archbishop Solly, there's my twin brother. I'll tell you what, we are walking in the kingdom now. We have fullness of joy, not joy, not just love, but true love, true life. And I'll tell you the greatest thing, Dr. Rouse, is to know that my lineage does not belong to Satan no more. I belong to my heavenly parent, and he is my heavenly father. So it's so good to be with you. Love all of you. Love you too, George. God bless. Love you, Jesse. Love you, Jesse. <laughs> good to see you, man. Good seeing you. Even more, it's even better seeing you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Bishop Jesse Edwards. Now, his wife, Dr. Tanya Edwards. Thank you, Dr. Rouse. I wanted to say thank you to uh, my friend George Stallings, uh, Patriarch Stallings. I enjoyed that lesson tonight. My God, what a wonderful, wonderful presentation and uh, commentaries from it. 
And, you know, that's one of the word eschatology is very um, intriguing. And I don't think that any one particular family will agree on the contents of, of uh, eschatology, but it's something that is desired and something that we, I love to talk about. But anyway, let's go to the throne of grace at this time. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity, this chance, this awesome time that you've allowed us to have, that you've allowed us to hear the words that have come to our ears and, the, and to our minds and to our knowledge and understanding that we've never had before or experienced. We pray that you would bless Patriarch tonight, that you would bless Dr. Rouse, that you would bless all those that are on the call tonight, because we know that without God, without his spirit, without your spirit, without the love that you have placed within our hearts and our beings, that we cannot face tomorrow unless you're there with us. And speaking of tomorrow, I pray that you be with me in my surgery, and I know that you will guide the hands of the doctors, and that you will see me through, and I will be on next week's yes. chosen. And I pray that you will bless each and every member, each and every person, each and every pastor, clergy, leader, everybody that's on the call tonight, that you give them an extra blessing. And when they come back next week, that they will bring others with them so that we can learn more about this eschatology because we know that we need to have the knowledge and the understanding to know what we face in the future. And we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor that we can offer tonight. And I offer this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Remember, God loves you, Marie and I. We love you too. Patriot Stallings, thank you for coming all the way to be with we'll be on us. Next week. Next week. All right. Next God week. Bless you. So do thank I. you. Young Soon, thank you. God thank you. Antonio so Bowman. Thank you, Bishop Edwards, Dr. Edwards, Dr. McMurray. Thank you, Reverend Katulik. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins, for being here. The leadership of the women in ministry. Let us give God thanks for YCLC and one another. We will see you next Monday. Woo! Okay. God loves you and so do I, everybody. All Love right. I love you, family. So do I. Love you all. Love you. Be blessed. Love you. Wendy, Washington, D.C. Thank you. Dr. Jesse. Thank Dr. Jesse. Thank you, Dr. 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 God bless you. 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 Yes. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. God loves you. And so do I, family. Be good, Gail. God bless. Amen.